Hey guys and welcome to RC and Legos and today we're upgrading the computer once again this time with a beefy cooler look at that thing all right so what we have here is the Phantom Spirit 120 not the SC variant you see a lot of reviews and stuff on the SC variant but I think the non SC looks better as you can see on the box here see it's got these nice top plates no like heat pipe sticking out so I think it looks better and it kind of matches the whole cooler kind of matches the theme of the build and right here is some of the best thermal paste you can get the Noctua NTH1 all right so let's go get started by running some performance tests with the stock cooler and then we'll switch out to this newer cooler and much beefier too this cooler has been actually been tested and it can cool the 13900K and I'm guessing the 14900K now. And by the way, I do not have any of the performance stuff enabled in the BIOS, so no auto overclocking or anything like that. Um, but when we put this cooler on, then we're going to turn all that stuff on just to see how much better performance we get. So that should be pretty cool. So, yeah. All right, so now we're to the unboxing stage of the Phantom Spirit 120. Let's open this up. Let's see, how does this open? Ah, here we go. Ooh, nice, look at that. Unlock chill performance here. All right, here we go. Looks like we got the accessories box right in here. Got your two fans over here and the cooler itself. They're quite big, but I'm used to like, you know, 80, 92 millimeter fans. So 120 seems pretty big to me. <laughs> but there you go. You got nice rubber uh, mounts to help isolate sound and probably help seal maybe. But there you go. Pretty nice fans. Let's see, and here's the cooler. Take it out of its bag here. There we go. See here, you can kind of see what I was talking about. It's got a nice black and kind of like white and silver, which kind of matches the theme of the build because it is black and silver is the main colors of the build. So this should go right along with it. Let's take a look at the accessories now. See what it comes with. All right, looks like it comes with some instruction manuals. All right, but let's see. I'm guessing these are the mounts. Yes, they are. Oh, nice, they label the bags too. So you know which ones you need. And we'll be needing this one. Pretty cool, look at that, labeled right there. Very nice. And let's see, there should be a bag. Let's see, is this the, there's a thermal paste that it comes with. So you do not need the remote paste to install this cooler. Very nice. Oh, look at this. This is nice. Comes with a splitter cable, as you can see. So you can plug both the fans into here and only use one port on the motherboard, which is good because mine only has one CPU fan port. All right, let's see what else. These look like the fan mounts. Now I've never installed fans this way using these mounts. So learning experience for me. But luckily they came with instructions of how to do it. So that is pretty nice. All right, let's get the computer up here and start opening everything up. All right guys, got the old stock cooler out as you can see. See, it's not very big, pretty small, right? Well, let's look at it compared to Peerless Assassin, I think is what it was called. <laughs> Boom, look at the difference. <laughs> Yes, I have checked. This does fit in the case, just barely, but it does fit. All right, so as you can see in here, here's the CPU, but I need to take off the back panel so I can access the, the mounting hardware back here. Because see where this is right here? That's the stock one that comes with the motherboard. All right, guys, so I did a little bit of looking and on this particular, the AM4 or AM5, you do not need to remove the stock backing plate. This 
is only for the Intel CPUs. So that's good. So we do not need to remove anything back here. It is perfectly fine as it is. Here we go. All right. So if I open up the AMD mounting brackets, we can see these ones right here are labeled AM4 and these longer ones are labeled nothing. All right, good to know. So according to the instructions here, we need to install these like so. And they go inward like this right here. And we put the screws in right there. All right, I got the AM4 mounts in. As you can see here, it takes these orange spacers. Yeah, there you go, you can see them. And then the mounting bracket, and then these letter K screws, I guess, is what they're called in the instruction manual. So I got that on there and there, and make sure the curve is pointing in. See that? All right, so now it's time to open up the thermal paste and to apply thermal paste and then put the cooler on. But first, I'm gonna tip down the case, just like that. So we don't have thermal paste running away. So let's open up the Noctua thermal paste now. Here's the thermal paste and here's the pull tab to open it. There we go. All right, and most of it is wasted packaging. Let's go. <laughs> Yep, there it is. Apparently I opened it wrong. But anyways, here's the box. And here's the thermal paste. So now, let's see if there's any instructions. Let's see, AM4. Supposed to put dots all around there. All right, let's put it on the CPU. Now I know how they say to do it, but I like one big blob in the middle. Oh yeah, that's nice stuff. Sure, that is plenty. All right guys, hold on, I need to clean up a bit. All right, now it's time to install the cooler. Now remember guys, warning, please remove this. So, put it like that, all nice and clean. Now, let's see. I'm going to put it on like this. There we go. Wiggle it a little bit. Smash down the thermal paste. And then I'll pull it off just to see if I put too much or too little on. Now with AM4, you got to kind of twist and pull. Otherwise, it will rip the CPU right out of the socket. And uh, not too bad, but I am going to put a little bit more on because I'm a moron. <laughs> Didn't get the joke. Sorry. As you know, guys, it's not how you do this, but I'm a complete noob at this. So I'm going to call that good. All right, I probably got air mixed in it. It's probably not gonna cool as well. Gonna burn the CPU because it's gonna have hot spots. Blah, 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 blah. And I put the, I don't know. I don't think it really matters which way you put it on. Okay, let's tighten up the screws before we break something. Find up the other side. Make sure to switch back and forth so you get a nice even distribution. You don't tighten up one side first, then the other, because it puts stress on one side of the CPU and socket and all that, and you want to evenly spread it out. So let's keep on going till it stops. I'm pretty sure it's the rule. Looks like I need a bigger screwdriver too. This one's kind of small for the job, but I'm going to call that good right there. See, oh yeah, very nice. All right, now it's time to mount the fans. Woohoo! 
All right, for the fans, usually they have a little arrow on them. That would not be the case here, but you usually just go in kind of like this, but you want to make sure you have your cables routed how you want them. And I think I want them coming over the top like this. Get that cable behind there. All right, and now I get to have fun trying to figure out these fan mounts. So it looks like these go into here. There we go. And I think I'll put the other one in too. Get that one in. Okay. Now, I think it just goes on like this and you pull it back. And that latches on. And this one's gonna be tricky back here. This is not much space. Whoa. There we go. Hey, check that out. Not too bad, kind of like these mounts. All right, now I got to do the inner fan here. And I'll put the, the connector the same way, so going over the top. And I forgot to put the mounts on first. Yay me. Okay, pull it back. Oh boy, gonna break something. If I haven't already did. All right, so trying to put these mounts on. All right, now slide it in, and I think I'll do the other side this time first. All right, I got that one in, and then this one's easy for you guys to see. Just pull it over this ridge here, and then it slides right in, and your fan is mounted. All right, guys, take a look at that. All right. See, now you can kind of see what I was talking about. You know, it matches the graphics card and the RAM, the motherboard. See? All right. So now it's time to install this fan header, I guess, or fan splitter. So it's to plug into the motherboard and then the, both the fans will plug into this. Let's see, one is three, one is four. I better look at the instructions. Hold on a bit. All right. So you can see in here, sort of, right here is the fan header. The other one I think is a pump header. So put this into here, the Y splitter, maybe. There we go. And then the two fans go into both of these. Uh, let's see, what nice. And gotta go get the other one. Oh and that, that, and that. I'm gonna just these over here because we do not need them and let's be honest you can't really see anything up here anyways so they will be fine up there all right the cooler is installed so let's run some performance tests and unlock the performance in the bios yeah. here we are ai overclock there we go ac's performance enhancement we can enable that okay but performance mode is on now yeah, here we go. Here's our CPU temperature running at 32. And if we go to the fan control, all right, CPU fan. Let's see. Will this speed up the fans? They are PWN. Uh, I don't mind having a louder computer. So I'll put it on turbo. All right, now we'll start into Windows and run Cinebench again and see the temperature. All right, guys, so there it is. Well, this new cooler has really cooled things down. As you can see to our performance testing, the new cooler runs cooler and we have performance enabled in the BIOS. So now I get even greater performance. So overall, this cooler has turned out pretty good. Of course, you can tell by the size that it is much bigger than the stock one. And well, it also has two fans on there too and those make a huge difference. 
Overall, I think the Phantom Beer 120 is a great cooler for, well, it's rated to even cool like the newer 14th gen Intel CPUs. So yeah, it should do plenty fine cooling this 5600. And yes, it is very overkill, but you can't beat it for the price. This is a great cooler for the price and one of the biggest ones and even can compete with the big not to a cooler. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.